y'all ready for this? Yes. This is the Lisa That's the show Giving you the 411 And it can be one This is There's so many things for Christmas, but I know what I really want, but it's just, they got so many bags, so many gifts, and so much stuff, and all kind of wrapping papers and stuff, but I mean, I love the season, I love getting with family, I love all of this stuff, but what I really want is a kidney. Who can I get out there to advocate for me to get a kidney? Let me see. Wait a minute. There's the Brown brothers. Mm-hmm. They always doing something. And that 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 Jonathan uh, that Jonathan fella. He always trying to you know hope with John and Jonathan and stuff like that. So he maybe he could help me or Mr. Bressler could help me. I just don't know that maybe Miss Donna can help me. Wait a minute. That that whisperer, that that great woman, that 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 hardworking lady. Ah, oh, the lady that's a social worker or oh, a kidney advocate. She's everything. Oh, gonna see everything. Mm. Uh, Liza, Leaky, Lolo, Olenke. No, 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 no. It's Lisa. That's right. Because this is the Lisa Baxter show, giving you the. 411 in the kidney world. Hey, y'all. Happy Sunday. How you doing? Nice to whoop. see you. All right. I might not mind being here. I thank God for my own life, and I thank him for yours, too. So I wanted to say thank you, guys. I wanted to say a few little things before I introduce my great, wonderful guest. Yes. What? All right, I want y'all to keep up with the arts and crafts. Arts and crafts is so therapeutic, the crocheting, the knitting, and what have you. Do what you can do, your little loops and stuff like that. Yes, all right, and then you got your hook rug, latch hook stuff, which I'm always telling you guys about. Remember the needle of that and everything? And remember the little thing you have to do so it looks like a little rug? Yes, you got to know that as well. And they got little pictures and stuff, you know, about it and everything. Oh, man, you can't go wrong with arts and crafts. It brings you closer to your kids, your family, your relatives. It gives you something to do. If you didn't have enough money, you can use that as a gift. People will appreciate your hard labor and work for what you have done and did. And if you don't like crocheting or knitting, maybe you like wood projects. As you can see, I do all kind of wood projects. Big clothespins, small clothespins, medium clothespins, regular size clothespins. All right? So that's with the arts and crafts and stuff like that. But I want you to show you some of the nice stuff. Woo! From AAKP. Woo! Isn't that nice? They gave me some bags, and I just want you to show you the different bags. If you join AKAP or, um, um, what is it? ESRD or, or any of those things, you get a lot of good information um, through the mail and the email as well and good gifts and presents and you can take part. I'm doing the walk, the annual walk for AAKP and um, I do all the walks and stuff for the National Kidney Foundation and for Polycystic Kidney Disease Foundation and for Get Your Rear in Gear. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So get involved. And do your thing. That's right. For you, yourself, and your family. You never know. Well, let's get this show and this party on the road. All right. Again, I apologize for the guests I've had that was supposed to come that couldn't come. And um, he couldn't do it after all. So the one for next week is this week. And so next week, I got Mr. Bressler. Ken Bressler is going to be next week. All right. There's some warriors that will step up for the cause. Well, let me introduce my guest. How about that? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Sweet. She's so sweetheart. Okay. Ladia Sanders. That's right. She has a nonprofit youth organization. 
right? She's a caregiver. She deals with lupus, right? She has a new store that she deal with. She's an entrepreneur. She's a mother. She's a um uh, was an editor for a magazine that I used to write for, and um she had put articles and stuff like that about me and and stuff like that. So she's just a good woman that will help anybody. I mean, she take people and she. I'm gonna let you hear her story. I ain't gonna tell it. I can't do it justice. All I can say is, Ladia, welcome to the Lisa Baxter Show. Woo! Welcome, welcome. Oh man, we go a while back now. We go a while back, and um, I just thank you for being on the show and taking time because I know you're hard to to get. You're a busy woman. Got to make an appointment with you, but I appreciate you stepping up to the plate, doing it today at the last minute instead of next week. So I appreciate and love you more for that. I'm just glad I could do it, and I feel sorry that you're getting been on here. Ah, uh, it's okay. You know, God knows all things. He does all things well. Probably another time. You know what I mean? So I did reschedule him for February. So I appreciate your care. Sharing is caring. So share this broadcast. Uh-huh. Make us go live and viral and all of that yum yum stuff. Well, anywho, let's get to the point. Hey, what is it? What's your passion of work that you are doing now or used to do? What job did you hold or have? Held. I've held a lot of jobs. I've done a lot of different things. Um, and part of the reason for that is I get bored easily. So I change ideas. Um, ah, right ah. now, I've had a nonprofit for several years. Um, I've always worked with people in general. Um, and I started a youth and community intervention program called Stars Clap. And that's an acronym for someone that acts responsible, standing on courage, love, awareness, and positive solutions. And so we address. Well, say that again. Say that acronym again. People don't, some people don't give enough love to the youth. So go on and say it again. Someone that acts responsible stands on courage, love, awareness, and positive solutions. Right now. And what, All right. what we do is we set up youth and community members in various locations to solve their own issues that they're facing in their community. We teach them how to do grassroots as low as you can go, no income, no um, budget whatsoever, and solve some of the issues that they're facing in their own communities. And we teach the kids to be the leaders because we spend too much time telling kids to sit down, be quiet, listen to what someone says and forget that even though they're 21% of the population now, they're 100% of our future. Wow. Woo. I love that. That's heavy and deep and just so true. Wow. That, hmm. Is there a website or any number for that? Maybe there's a youth that uh, need to know something about it or interested or a family member or parent might want to you know there's, chime there's, in. A, there's, a, there's a facebook page starsclapinc.com um mm -hmm. we're easily reachable on facebook that's the easiest way and you'll get a quick message to me and i answer them at three o'clock in the morning if necessary so but we run several programs in various locations and it's just based on what the kids want if the kids want to clean up their park. We teach them how they can set up a way to clean up their park on their own. They don't need the city approval or someone to help them. They can do it on their own. Uh huh. I'm getting a sign that say turn off my green screen and I'm not sure how to turn it off. 
I wish I would have. Oh, God. I wish somebody would tell me this before the show started. But such as life. Hopefully, if I come off, I can come back. But I didn't want to do anything too bad like that because I don't exactly know that might cut the whole thing off. But I like what you're doing. I mean, do I look fuzzy to you or anything like that? Maybe I'm showing you out there. No, you look fine on my side. Okay, because I see a little thing, and I was thinking about that when the show started, but it already started. But anyway, anyway, let me, let, let's go on. Uh, listen, listen, you, 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 you started that. Um, tell us a little about your magazine. We are on hiatus for this year, pretty much. Um, but mm -hmm. the magazine is also done by the youth. We do a monthly magazine called Stars Clap Inc. Um, we have kids lay it out, write it, edit it. Um, I don't care if they're six or they're 16. We can have some adult assist them or I will assist them. So they learn software, they learn job skills, they learn how to write more than high school, more than grade school because they're writing for a public. It's all positive and it's all free. And at the um, probably about May of this year, we're going to switch it completely online. We were doing it in print, but we're going to switch it all online. So you're telling me that you are using the youth to learn because they are the future and they, they need something to do. Um, what made you come up with this idea to, to get them so involved like this? I think kids have a voice. They have just as much right to speak as we as adults do. They just don't have the same experience. Adults are only kids that have made more mistakes and lived longer. Uh, and so I like that. They, have a voice. they have a voice and they're experiencing things that we didn't experience at that age group that they're having to deal with that we didn't have to deal with. And who better to champion their cause than them themselves? And it doesn't matter if it, it doesn't matter if it's grandma is sick all the time and I have to take care of grandma, or mom's a drug addict, or dad's in jail, or I'm having trouble at school, I'm depressed, I'm whatever. Who's better to champion their cause than them? We have to teach our kids. We worry a whole lot about teaching them math, science, English. But we don't have to teach them how to stand up for themselves in appropriate ways or how to take step by step the teeny tiny skills it takes to develop into something else. When the wind blows in your face, you got to turn directions. We teach them about north, south, east and west. We don't teach them how to turn. That's wise and that's wisdom. That's true wisdom. Come on, girl. And, Come on. I ain't hardly mad at you. You ain't never lied. That's that's why this started because I wanted kids to know that even if adults weren't listening to them or I have kids and a lot of times they say, mom, you're not listening to me or you don't know what it's like or whatever. Even some things I do know what it's like, but they feel that way. And so the best way to teach them to, to make value of their own life is to teach them how to do that. It's kind of goes back to the, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, you can feed him for a lifetime. Well, we can teach these kids Word. how to start nonprofits. We can teach them how to start nonprofits. Then instead of a eight-year-old that's causing trouble somewhere because he doesn't have enough food to eat, so he goes out and steals something, we're teaching him how to start a garden and not just start the garden, but manage the garden, get his friends to help. Um sell the produce on a produce stand, uh, give the other half back to the community. We're not raising a child. We're raising the future CEO. Everything I just uh, said, yes. Everything I just said is what a CEO does every day in every fortune 500 company. Why not teach our six year olds to do that? Why not teach our 15 year olds to do that? You prepare them. Life skills. You got to prepare them for life. They don't know what they may run into 
or you right. know they can learn from your right. benefit and your the things you dealt with but now these are new challenges in different times of what they're dealing with now so i i do like that because i um volunteer with the the children that's in prison and they're from 10 years old to 18 years old and i teach religious studies in there and dealt with ACS for a lot of years when the children ran away taken from their parents. And I love the idea or the concept that you're doing it this way where you're teaching them something and they're getting something out of it. They're seeing the benefit of learning this thing, not just doing it because something you just do. But if you get the benefit of learning it, you know what I mean? And like what's being taught, a lot of times if you own the thing, you'll, you'll do better with it. That's why even as a social worker with my own clients, I just don't say, go get a job and go get this. This That's the old concept. The new concept, if me and you sit down and map out a plan of something that you want to do, you'll reach the goal better. And telling me, tell, for me telling you what your goal is and, and forcing you to do it or mandating you to do it. So I ain't mad at you. I'm loving that. I'm loving that, honey. I'm loving that all the way. And we take their skills wherever they may be. If I get a kid and it's sometimes people don't like the way I refer to kids because I refer to kids. If if I've got a street hustling kid that's been living out in the street, that hustles for their way of life, their way of living, everything about them is a street hustling kid, why not embrace the fact that that's the skills they know and just teach them that they can do those same skills, the same thing they're comfortable with, but sell lemonade instead of drugs, sell the newest beauty product instead of weed. Like, why not teach them it's the same skill? Because a lot of them don't realize that. A lot of them think that whatever they're doing is the path they need to be on. They don't know that they can change it in those same skills that they have. If they talk real good and they can hustle real good, they can be a great salesman and make millions of dollars in the marketing industry. They don't know that it's the same skill. They just got to change focus, change perspective. Yes. If you can change a perspective, you can change a mind. If you can change a mind, you can change the world. Wow. You know, that's so true. I was uh, telling somebody uh, something like that before because the drug dealing thing that you're doing, you're putting a product out there. You're selling a product. I'm not saying it's a good product. I'm just putting it out there. I'm showing you the skill from that, that you could take something away from that. You know, because this is their, that was their hustle, that was their way of life, and now you're trying to change it. Now you got to show them how they can bring it someplace else. You know what I mean? They had to count money. You know what I'm saying? Our money up. No locations. That's strategic location where you 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 know everybody stood and said, you know where you're gonna collect the money or where the product is being sold. What 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 location is better and good and and you know who you know because you might change the location because. It wasn't working over there. So yes, that is a skill. You, you you counting money, learning about money, learning about, you know, planning and, and, and changing stuff. I love it. I love it. And the youth need that. They don't necessarily need to be thrown away. They need to be cared about and loved. I know some of them are tough. Some of them are hard to deal with. I mean, I, I've dealt with all, all kinds of children, you know, runaways, abused children, uh, smart children, children that uh, didn't want to go to school. But I like that you're turning their lives around. Now, you've done this, but you've also took children off the street and took them into your home. Tell us a little bit about that. There's lots of kids that frequent my house. There's been kids in the past that have come and lived at my house because they just don't have anywhere to go or things aren't so good. Um, and so they come and stay at my house. Pretty much no questions asked other than, are you okay? Um, and we provide for them just like we provide for our kids. If my kids are eating, six other kids are eating. If my kids wow. have clothes, six other kids have clothes. Wow. Whatever, wow. Whatever's needed and whatever's required, that's what we do. And then when they don't need it anymore, or they don't think they need it anymore, or they just don't need me anymore, or they just don't need me anymore, even the best of situations, they don't fit your plan. They don't fit where you're going. So you outgrow that. And you just send them on their way with the best advice you can. 
and say, okay, there was no judgment. There was no, you know, go live your life. And I hope you took something away from me because I earned something from you. And I'm also a believer, good, bad, or indifferent. We don't have to gain something positive necessarily from an interaction with another person. Sometimes we just need the lesson. So no matter whether it's good, no bad, or indifferent, good, bad. you're getting something. It's either a lesson, a blessing, or both. And I get just as much from any <laughs> like of help. A lesson, a blessing, or both. And no matter who I'm dealing with, it's like either a lesson, a blessing, or both. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. That's a good thing. You know what I mean? That's a good thing because, you know, you, you care enough about them to bring them in your own home. And some things is seasonal. You know what I mean? Sometimes the person is not in your life forever. There's a season that they're in your life. So maybe it's a year or two, maybe it's a few months, maybe it's a few days, maybe it's a one-time meeting thing, but they're in for a season of time in your life. And sometimes you can't make the season last longer or keep going like you might want to, but that's what, you know, that's what's being done at the time. So that right. is wonderful. You are also... Mm -hmm. we, look, we look for blessings like... I think a lot of people look for the blessings like I'm doing this and a blessing will come back to me. Sometimes the blessings aren't for us. We all have a purpose on this planet. But sometimes the purpose isn't for us. Sometimes the purpose is somebody else. Your purpose is for somebody else. It's not always for you. So when people, even the kids like, I don't feel a purpose. I don't know what my purpose is. Baby, sometimes it ain't for you to know. It's not your blessing. It's somebody else's. You're the and you got to wait carry it over or the one who have. Uh -huh. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When I used to go into the hospital, nothing really was deeply wrong with me and they would keep me. I said, oh, Lord, who you want me to pray for, minister to or something? You have me in a hospital for some reason. And, you know, it might, I might have needed some rest, but a lot of times I was in there to help somebody else while I was in there. You know what I mean? Right. So that, that can happen too. You are also a caregiver. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I've been a caregiver three times and there have been caregivers on the show and there may be somebody looking in that maybe want to take a child in or maybe a caregiver. I have a lot of transplanted kidney patients out there and there's kind of people out there. So tell us a little bit about being a caregiver. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a challenge, but at the end of the day, Whatever situation, whether it's kids, elderly people, whoever you're caring for, someone that's sick, at the end of the day, through all the frustrations, you all just got to remember that it could be you and it will be at some point. And whoever's taking care of you is going to face the same frustrations, maybe different ones, but just because it's different, it's just as important to them as your frustration is to you. Like, you may look at my frustrations and say, oh, those are minor. I may look at your frustrations and say, oh, those are major. I don't see how she does it. But they're just as minor or major to you because they're your frustrations. So when you're a caregiver, you just got to try to keep it in your head that someday somebody's going to have to take care of you. Whether we like it or we don't. That, you know? And we just have to deal with it because it's just part of the life cycle. We were not put in this planet, whether you believe um, the theory of evolution, whether you believe God, I'm not saying anybody's religious beliefs. But in either situation, we were not brought on this planet individually. If you believe biblically, there was Adam and Eve. There was a helpmate. There was another person. It was by design. If you just... If you go the theory of evolution and we came from other animals, there wasn't just one animal and one person created. There was multiple animals, multiple people. We were designed to be in things together. We weren't designed to go through life alone. That's why our personalities, we can be opposites attract. You need that other half to make you up. It's not that you're not good enough on your you're own. Not good enough it's just that we need that other influence because we were designed from design. We were created to be together. 
Well, what's the hardest thing about being a caregiver? And what's the easiest if there's an easiest thing? Um, the hardest thing is knowing that you're the last on the list. Because unfortunately, that's mm. the way it gets very often. Um, a friend of mine told me something today that I had never heard. But he said, Joy. And he said, Jesus, others, and then you. That's what will bring you joy. So being that you on the end is kind of the hardest thing because you feel like there's never enough time for you. Or you feel like you need more time to do this, that, the other. And especially if you're very busy like you are, like many women are these days, even men. They're working jobs. They've got other businesses. They're trying to get through COVID. They're trying to get their kids to school. You just don't feel like you have enough time. The easiest thing is just knowing that you're there loving somebody. You're giving them something that they wouldn't have. They would not have it if you weren't the one. That's why you're the caregiver. Because nobody else stepped up to that plate. Or couldn't or didn't have the abilities or whatever. So you are providing something that they wouldn't have without you. And so that's the easiest thing, just being that person. That's true. I have family say, I can't do it. You Please do it. I, I can't do it. Or I don't want to see him that way. Like I wanted to see the person that way. Like I, you know, but you do what you have to. But a lot of times you need a break and you don't hardly get it. Sometimes you need a moment. You don't hardly get it. And sometimes you, you need a lot of things. But just so you can function, not only mentally for yourself, but even for the person that you're taking care of. You want to do a good job with it. But if you beat down and wore out, it, it's hard. You need somebody, you know, a backup, a plan or something. That's always good to have in a family. If you can dish it out or find it. Because sometimes people say, oh, yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. But they never show up. They don't come. Or they change changing my girl I wanted to. Girl, I'm busy. Girl, I mean, you're doing such a good job. You, know? you don't need me. You strong, right. girl. Right. Thank you for the accolades, and but come on. Jump on up in here. Get on all the way, all the way up in here. So I ain't mad right. at you. And sometimes you feel like that. Like, what do you mean you can't see them? Like you said, I can't see them like that. But you also got to know people are designed different. What you can handle, the next person can't. And they may literally not be able to do that. And you can. Um, well, I go as far as and cry. I would cry and I wouldn't do that in front of my parents or my husband. And I come out like a red sunshine. Hey, you're my honey and my booby and all of this kind of stuff. But they didn't know what I was doing when I was in that bathroom. It didn't mean I was strong enough, but I'm the only one to do it. So I have to act the part. If even if I, even if I couldn't do it, I got to act the part because there's nobody else. So I ain't but mad at you. You the fact to that the you get the part made you stronger. I ain't mad at you for that either. But I hope it doesn't give anybody an excuse not to jump in or run in. Because we, you're stronger than you think. At least try or make an attempt. Let me see you. If you can't do it, then I can understand it. But I'm no really? judge on it or anything like that. But I wouldn't want anybody to go through this by themselves. And I wouldn't want them to get somebody that's going to be so frustrated and want to beat them up and all of that. Because you get elder abuse and people with disabilities abuse and stuff like that out there. I've done many skits and talks about that and put numbers out there on and about that too. Somebody just taking the person's check, you know, and stuff like that. Not only treating them nice in public and not in private. You know, so people go through so many things. That's why I do all types of shows with resources and different stuff. I don't know if you know anything about dialysis or transplants or anything like that. If you do, feel free to say. And uh, we're going to talk about your business because you have a new store and we want to say something on that. Yeah, I recently started a store. Um, it was in the works for a long time. And it's a men's and women's clothing store and accessories. It's called 2020 Vision Customs. And everything to do with the store is going to go to, on the 20th of each month, um, everything that's bought on the store, half of those proceeds from what's bought on the store will go to a cause that I will post up on the store, whether it be kidney dialysis patients this month, heart patients next month, homeless kids the next month, 
but it's just a way to give back something. Um, I think that since we've all been in COVID and been under all the stress and all the different things going on with COVID at home, all of this, if you haven't learned something during this process or you haven't created something, you're not doing anything. And that's not to put stress on people or say they're not doing anything, but we've had ample. I mean, I hear I'm bored all the time, whether it's my kids, community members, whatever. If you're that bored, create something, build something or do something. And so this was my opportunity to start the store. When I originally went to college way back when I wanted to be a designer. And it just didn't play out. I originally started, I wanted to be a stage designer, like designing stages for Broadway plays and movies. Ooh, it didn't play it. out. I, I couldn't afford the school, but I could get a scholarship for other things. So I did the scholarship. I went to other things, but I always wanted to be a designer. I would mess around with clothes, arts and crafts, like you said, um, just various things. So this COVID time, was a time for me to sit down with um, businesses and try to talk deals like, look, I think I can make you some money and me some money because I don't do stuff with a lot of money. Pretty much any money I have and anyone that knows me can tell you it goes somewhere else to somebody else. And I'm not talking bills. Like I spend it back into other things and other people. Um, so I do things just grassroots. So I'm talking to manufacturers saying, look, if I can sell this many of them, you get this much money. I get that much money. Let's work together. And I work yeah. it together like that. So my time through COVID was spent doing the designs and everything. Even my close friends were like, girl, when did you start this? They had no clue it was going on until the store was up and running, which was right before Thanksgiving. Oh, you just started. Recycle your money, recycle your time. And look what's been birthed out of that. Look at the idea you came with, out with. Right. Wow. And it, wow. My children. Well, what do you sell? They, we sell clothing, all kinds of clothing. Um, women's and men's clothing at the current time if, and accessories. It will. We sell shoes, purses, handbags, all that stuff. And after the first of the year, because I'm still developing with contracts. So after the first of the year and I get more manufacturers online. I've got other things like I got a children's clothing line coming out for small kids. Um, we've got some other things in the works once I get the manufacturers get done. done, but it's up and running. Everything's going well. We're actually selling things. Um, and I want it to be a sentiment like for my kids. I want it to be an example. for anybody. I want it to be example. I, I stay at home. I'm a caregiver. I work from home. I run a nonprofit. I wrote five children's books that are published um, and everything basically from at home in my kitchen. I don't have thousands wow, of dollars. You know, I don't have, I've got a health illness that's eventually terminal. Lupus is eventually terminal. So, I mean, you don't, no matter what you're going through, you can do and follow and do what you want to do. You just may have to do it a different way. Lydia, you said lupus, right? Yes. Uh-huh. So you I deal got, with lupus. I got diagnosed with lupus in 2018. Mm -hmm. And they told me at the and time I would have six months to live because my lupus cells were quadrupling daily. We're 20 years later, I'm still here. Wow. Well, I'm glad you didn't go on dialysis because it can cause uh, kidney failure. Right. And I've you know. got really close to that at times. I've had a couple of instances of getting very close to dialysis. Wow. Well, what, what helped you not to get on? So maybe somebody out there that have need to hear that. Honestly, I went um, over. I didn't go physically overseas, but I did research online. And there was a all natural supplement called kidney. I call it kidney DR doctor, but it was kidney DR. 
And it was supposed to help flush your kidneys, help work your kidney function and improve your kidney function. And when I'm looking at, I'm going to have dialysis, what do you really got to lose at that point? So I called and I got the stuff and um, it wasn't super costly. I mean, it wasn't cheap, but it wasn't super costly. Nothing like medical cards and stuff wouldn't pay for it because it was a supplement. I was at about 15% kidney function on one kidney. And in a month of using this stuff twice daily, I was up to 35% in that same kidney. I used it for the other month and I went up almost to 90. I also treat my lupus all naturally with no pharmaceutical medicine at all. It's all natural supplement type medication. Oh, and I've been one for many years. Wow. <laughs> I heard people become vegetarian. I heard people do all kinds of things. I mean, they said they prayed and it was gone. I've heard people say they had an operation. I mean, not with lupus, but, you know, different things, different illnesses. You know, they say they had a tea. They went to an herbalist, you know, but listen, what makes it go? Let me tell you, sometimes you just get that desperate just to try some of everything to make the thing gone or go. But it's a blessing if you're able to live with it, too, because a lot of times the struggles, it doesn't go and you're going to be faced to live with it. So learn how to live with it. That's why we do these shows. This is why we have this network and we're on the network. And what I love about it is just growing. Hey, people having podcasts all over the place. People are having shows and extra and other shows and things like that. I've been running with this about almost 10 years, uh, you know, and um it's been a long minute, but like the fact that there's there's millennials out there and there's other people out there that care or have the same passion and want to help somebody else out there. And you, by you telling your story, your journey, and your journey, have proved and shown a lot to that. But honey, before I end this show, um, can you give some words of encouragement, advice, or wisdom as you already been doing with them nuggets, them gold nuggets? Um, uh, to a woman out there, maybe she's doing a business out there and she might need a little advice. Maybe she's somebody, like you said, had a little money and trying to do a little something, something or recycle things. Or or, or they're just a, 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 a caregiver that maybe reached the end of their rope. Can you give a little love out there for somebody? My advice to the women that are trying anything, whether it's the caregiver, whether it's the business, um, and not just women, anybody that's trying to do things, if you've got to want something first, and we always tell people you got to want it, but that's not enough. Whatever you want, you've got to work twice as hard as you want. If you want a new car, you got to work twice as hard to get it as you want that car. If you want a healthy lifestyle, and you say, oh, I want to be, I don't care if it's, I want to be skinny for New Year's. I want to be skinny for my birthday. I've gained this weight for COVID. If you want it, you got to work twice as hard to get it. And then there's three Ds, dedication, determination, and discipline. You got to be determined. That's the one. The dedication is the work that you put in. And the discipline is what gets you up every morning to make you do it when you don't want to do it. So if every day you say dedication, determination, and discipline, and every day you say, this is what I want, and I got to work twice as hard to do it, but don't get overwhelmed in the process. If you want to be a doctor and you have no education, start that first step. Let me get a list of what I need to know to get into college. That's step one. Now let me work each step in teeny tiny and go each step until it's done. You will get it accomplished if you just do so too. You'll get it accomplished. Pearls pearls of wisdom. That's what I'm talking about. Wonderful, great pearls of wisdom. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. Is there anything we missed? Don't let anybody tell you you can't. It's impossible. 
I started a whole section of my life where it's impossible. Because if you break yeah. that word down, it's yeah. impossible. The word itself says I'm possible. Mm. Come on now. I, I like I, it. Come on, girl. What? Come on here. So there's nothing impossible. Yes, yes. And those are my words what? of wisdom. Don't give up. Don't give up. And just, if you sit there and say it's impossible, in the very statement, you're already saying it's possible. So get up and do it. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Well, wow. Is there anything we forgot before I end the show? 30 minutes go fast. I'm sure we probably went a little longer. It throws me off to start after eight because then I keep looking at the clock and then it's really, it's really, I didn't start at eight. I start like 8.15. So I, I'm trying to keep up with it. You know what I mean? The good thing is no show after this, but I don't want to keep them out there too long. Somebody got to go to work tomorrow. Somebody got to go to bed. Some maybe kid got to go to bed, but I'm glad they're all watching the show. Excellent. What did we may forgot? What have we may forgot? Excuse my English. To thank our wonderful host Not for having us. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, my God, God. Well, thank your neighbors and thing. Please thank them. I, I told you that on the phone as well. People don't have to be nice. Nice would be important, but it's more important to be nice. So I truly thank you. Archbishop Ross would always say that. So thank you for being on the show. My best to your mom, my best to your, your children and the ones that staying with you because you also the family member that take everybody in too. So I ain't mad at you about that. You got a good big heart. Enjoy the holidays, the season, everything. Release not be God, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Okay. Thank you so much, love. You Happy rock. Holly and thank you again. remember to bless us. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate you. Good night. You're welcome. Well, you guys have heard it. That's right. You have heard it on the Lisa Baxter show. Yes, you have. Just before I end the show, I got to give you a couple of little resources. All right. The um, Lung Association, 212-315-8700. That is the Lung Association. The American Heart Association is 212-878-5900. I'm also going to put it in the, the messages, okay? Um, the American Kidney Fund. The American Kidney Fund is excellent. They help a lot with medication, especially if you had a transplant and some other resources that they do. But call to find out 800-638-8299. Okay, that's the American Kidney Fund. The Liver Disease um, Association is 212-241-7270. Let me tell you, all of them have 1-800 numbers if you don't have the money to be able to call. And don't feel funny if it's in a certain state, not in your state, because if you're able to call, they still can give you information, email you, mail you stuff as well. So don't give up just because it might not be in your town or your country or in your city. Well, I'm loving you right now. See you next week. Mr. Kent Bressler from Kidney Solutions is going to be on the show next week. How about that? Woo, all oh, kidney stuff is in the house. Love you. Good night. V for victory. Peace. Sharing is caring. Bye. This is the Lisa Baxter Show, giving you the 411 in the kidney world. This is